sending a rover to Mars to do geologic field work inevitably leads to frustration. Collecting a rock sample is one of the simplest things a geologist does on Earth, but a second attempt last week shows how hard it is to do on Mars. On this episode of Mars Guy, here's all the gear needed to collect a rock sample on Earth. That no moving parts sampling device couldn't be simpler, but the biotechnology required to operate it currently can't be sent to Mars. So instead, a team of engineers spent many years and many millions of dollars to design, build, and test a system that could work on Mars without human assistance. The resulting sampling and caching subsystem has worked remarkably well about 80% of the time. Mars created some challenges for the other 20%. The current challenge is like the first one, which happened during the very first sampling attempt. In that case, the rock was so water-altered and crumbly that it fell apart during the coring operation. The coring bit was designed for harder rocks. It's actually a pretty clever and even patented eccentric design. Eccentric as in off-axis, not strange. It's easiest to see in the off-axis flange at the tip of the sample tube. That tube goes into the hollow bit, which has wall thickness that varies around the circumference. The bit and tube are on axis during the drilling operation. When finished, the tube is locked in place and then the bit is rotated 180 degrees, forcing them out of alignment and shearing the core off at its base. The misalignment keeps the core from falling out when the bit is lifted out of the hole. This works even if the core is in pieces but not if the pieces are smaller than the opening. That's what happened on the first sampling attempt and the most recent one. Let's start with the really big picture. Perseverance has been exploring a stack of sediments inside Jezero Crater that fans out from a place in the rim where a long, sinuous channel enters. The best explanation for these features is that flowing water both carved the channel and deposited the sediments in a fan. Over time, water even carved channels into the fan, some of which are now inverted in places thanks to the channel fill material being more resistant to erosion than the surrounding material. Perseverance is now parked close to a prominent example of one of these inverted channels, and images on the ground are revealing. Here's Mars Guy for scale. They show outcrops with crude layers consistent with sedimentary rock. Close-up images show poorly sorted grains, some larger than 2 millimeters and some rounded, qualifying this as a conglomerate, likely deposited by flowing water. But the mineral cement holding the grains together was not strong enough to produce a good core sample. The view inside the sample tube showed only a few pieces at the bottom, as I presented in the previous episode. Since then, the team chose to make another sampling attempt in the hope of getting more material. There's only 38 tubes available for samples, and half have already been used, so better to fill one up to get your money's worth. Unfortunately, the second attempt failed completely. The view inside the tube this time was not good. A whole lot of nothing was collected. But this is a high science value target, so the team decided to move to an adjacent location, showing impressive exposures of layered outcrop that were not visible from the original location. Maybe there's a more vertical surface that could be drilled that would orient the coring bit more horizontally to keep a crumbling sample inside. Or maybe there's a better cemented rock that's actually hard, not just difficult. <laughs> 